Hi, this is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to explain how to use the PolyEd tool in modeling mode in Unreal Engine 5.1. So I'm going to start by just making a box primitive here. I'll accept that, I'll press the F key to sort of zoom in, and then I'm going to start PolyEd. So PolyEd uh, is not polygon editing, it's polygroup editing. Um, but basically this is our sort of single tool for doing all sorts of poly modeling like operations to triangle meshes in Unreal Engine. And I say triangle meshes even though as you see here I'm hovering it's highlighting quads because the mesh has polygroups. And I've got other videos about polygroups um, but for the context of this video I'm going to assume you know what polygroups are which are essentially just groups of triangles. So I can turn on the wireframe here and see the triangles. Uh, and this tool is for doing all sorts of operations based on those polygroups. So the basic you know, stuff it can do is you can select those faces uh, and get a gizmo and move them around. You can also select edges or select vertices. Um, and then you can do operations like say an inset or an extrude. And sort of now we're doing basically the kind of the kind of poly modeling you might be familiar with from other DCC tools. And then when you're happy, you can hit accept, and you've got your edited mesh. And you can you know use m the many other tools to do other operations based on that. Um, but you see, there's quite a large panel here. There's lots of operations, and even just at the selection level, there's a lot of things. So in this first video here, I'm just going to talk about. Uh, the various selection capabilities we have. So uh, the top section of the panel here is operations. Selection starts in here and about the middle. So we've got some obvious buttons like select all and invert selection. So if I select a face and invert it, I'm going to get the inverted face selection. Um, when you see when I did select all, it did vertices. Um, basically these selection filters control what can be selected. So if I do a marquee select also it's going to select vertices. If I toggle vertices off, now I can't select vertices anymore. So when I do a marquee select, it'll do edges. When I do select all, it'll do edges. If I toggle edges off, now I can only select faces. Um, and then same thing, if I do select all, it does faces. Marquee select does the faces. Uh, the marquee select selects through. You see I basically got all the faces I hit, including the back ones. You can check this box or uncheck this marquee ignore occlusion. Uh, and now it'll only select the faces that are visible. You see it didn't select the back faces there. Um, and then we've got the sort of standard other, so you can shift to add to your selection, control to remove from your selection. Uh, that works in the marquee as well, so if I shift select down here, I can shift select up there, maybe control select those middle faces out. So that's a quick way to sort of pick faces in your model. Um, so this I started with a simple cube. I'm going to delete this and go back to the box tool and just put the subdivisions up to three to show you the loop select options. I'm going to set this to per quad and make another box. Looks the same, right? But actually it's got more faces. If I go into polyed, uh, now it's a three by three cube. Um, so the reason I did that was to show these other two options, which is select edge loops and rings. So when I turn that on, it won't do anything until, or no, it will, even with edges turned off. So now you can see it selects um, whole loops of edges. You know, select that loop. I can use the scaling handle here that's a little hard to see to do things like that. Um, something to notice is that it won't select the loop around the top here. The loop select only goes through valence for, for like regular uh, quad vertices. Otherwise, it'll only select across this edge strip until it hits like a three or a five, or sometimes those are called E or N poles. Um, so that's loop select, and then there's also ring select, which will select the ring around. Same kind of thing. Um, you can have both of those on, and then it'll select nearly everything, so you probably only want one or the other. Um, so that's uh, the loop. Uh, and bring, or that's the selection filters uh, that are available. Um, and then you see once you made one of those selections, you get a gizmo, right? And the gizmo is based on, the gizmo orientation can be sort of defined in lots of ways. So we've got up here the global lo local toggle. So um, 
let's just rotate this cube a little so it's off axis here. Um, jump back into poly, poly ed. So if I select this face by default, I'm going to get in, in sort of global coordinate modes, I'm going to get a gizmo aligned to the world coordinates, you know, so I can move that face up. If I toggle it to local, I'm going to get a local coordinates face. Now what that local means uh, can change depending on let's use the loop select here and just move this down so we get a sort of flat face there so you um, you'll see here that the gizmo is actually aligned to the face normals of the of the selection so if I go down here you see this local frame mode that's set to from geometry so now it's aligning it to basically what is selected trying to guess if I change this to from object now it's just aligned to the local frame of the object so the sort of main box axes that I started with. Um, there's also a lock rotation option here so if I go back to from geometry say uh, I select this edge the gizmo when you select an edge will try to align the axis of the gizmo with that edge regardless of which way the edge is pointing so now if I wanted to move this face along that edge I can lock the rotation of the gizmo and then select the face and it'll keep that orientation even if I select say this edge or this face it'll keep the one that I've locked it to so you can use that to sort of copy orientations from one face to another there's there's a whole system for repositioning this gizmo I'll show in another video um, but that's the lock rotation and frame mode options and that's where I'm going to stop this one so uh, come back for part two